Greetings, nerds. What's up? It's your boy Piso, and here we're going to talk about the Avengers 2 Age of Ultron trailer. Now, if you're like me, after seeing the trailer, you probably had a huge giant nerd boner that you had to deflate. I'm still working on mine. But uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So Avengers 2 trailer dropped, and here's our first screen grab. Uh, we have the Avengers kind of, they look beat up, you know. Uh, Banner, he's cuddled up in a blanket. Thor staring off in the distance. Uh, Widow and Cap look tired. This film really looks like it's going to be very dark, very Empire Strikes Back-like. And um, yeah, the Avengers are going to be tested. Uh, but what I want us to talk about in this video really is some of the secrets and some of the you know theories I have about this film just based on uh, the trailer. So let's get right into my first theory. And um, I want to go to this picture of Andy Serkis here. Um, those of you who may not know, Andy Serkis also played Gollum in Lord of the Rings. And uh, you know, he, he's also in the the Apes films. Um, he plays Caesar. He's basically the best motion capture actor in film. So when I heard he was going to be in Age of Ultron, everyone kind of assumed that he was going to be doing the motion capture for The Incredible Hulk. Looks like uh, they have him as a regular person. So when I first saw this photo, I didn't know. I'm like, who is he playing? And then I looked at some theories online. I thought about it. And I'm like, he's probably playing Ulysses Claw. Now, for those who may or may not know, Ulysses Claw is a supervillain in the Marvel Universe that is almost like a poacher. He's kind of like, um, you know, he goes into the wilds of Africa and, and, and looks for, you know, uh, very rare things and, 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 and poaches them. And uh, for a lot of people who may or may not know, he's connected to Black Panther. And a lot of you, we are very excited about the potential for a Black Panther film, and we all kind of know what's coming. Now, why would Ulysses Claw be in an Avengers 2 film if Black Panther isn't in it? Now, here's my theory. One of the things that Black Panther represents, he lives in the continent of Wakanda. He has vibranium. Vibranium is this really rare ore that actually is used to make adamantium, which is still met the same metal that Wolverine uh, skeleton is made of. Vibranium also composes Captain America's shield. So Captain America's shield is made of vibranium. Uh, Ulysses Claw likes to hunt vibranium. Maybe he has a cachet of vibranium. Ultron, in his final form, is made of vibranium. So there's a lot of vibranium going to be used in this film. So I'm guessing that that's the reason Ulysses Claw is in it. And they're also going to use him to set up the future Black Panther film. I think this is brilliant. I think allowing Andy Serkis to play like a regular person as opposed to, you know, an animal or some computer-generated character is great because we can we know he's a good actor and now we need to get to see him act. Um, that The fact that they're planting the seeds for Black Panther already is letting us know the Black Panther movie is probably right around the corner. So I'm really excited about his inclusion in this film. And, um, you know, he looks like Ulysses Claw. He's got the Panama Jack shirt on. He looks all rugged and bearded. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he's going to be playing Ulysses Claw. And um, as evident, we can see Captain America's shield gets broken. He's going to need to fix that shield at some point. So who's going to fix that shield? How are they going to get the vibranium? So I think that's how uh, Andy Serkis fits into this film. Um, here we have Banner, and he's, you know, crawling through the snow. Uh, there's a lot of uh, talk about Banner being mind controlled at this, you know, in this film. We're going to talk about that a little bit later because, you know, he does end up fighting Iron Man. And um, we don't know. It looks like a lot of the photos I'm seeing from Banner and a lot of the um, images we're seeing is that he's going to be very troubled and possibly, you know, mind controlled. And I'm thinking that the Scarlet Witch is going to mind control him, seeing that she's not going to be a hero at the beginning of the film, she's going to be a villain. So I think we're going to get some old-fashioned mind control for, for the Hulk. Now, this image I really am interested in because this is the flashback. And um, a lot of people might not realize that that is Steve Rogers back in the 1940s. And I'm pretty sure the two people next to him are Howard Stark and uh, Peggy Carter. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it seems like that. Now, I don't know where the flashback fits into this film. Um, I don't know how, you know, this is going to all tie in. You know, there were some rumors that uh, they're going to establish the beginning of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm assuming that this is my assumption. <laughs> my assumption is that Hank Pym attempted to build a machine, to build a, an, an AI robot, and it didn't work. And they were going to build, you know, him and Howard Stark and Peggy Carter and some of the founding members of S.H.I.E.L.D. decided that it wasn't going to work, and they kind of put their efforts you know on the shelf and then tony stark finds out about it and he's the one who ends up resurrecting the ultron program but that's just my theory all right let's keep it moving 
Here we have Fury, Nick Fury. And um, interesting enough, because we, we, he, we only see him briefly in this trailer. And um, as, as we all know, he went really deep underground at the end of Captain America 3, or at the end of Captain America 2, and at the end of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Fury went underground, and he's not even in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. anymore. You know, um, Phil Coulson is in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. So what? how does Fury fit into this whole film? I think Fury is going to be starting a secret Avengers team, and I think when everything goes down with Avengers 2 and the world gets screwed up, I think Fury is going to try to, you know, bring Captain America and some of the other Avengers into an underground, more secret Avengers type of team, and I think that team is going to be the team that ends up going against Tony when the whole Civil War storyline pops off, so that's just my theory. Um, here we have a cool shit shot of Hawkeye. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about Hawkeye in this film, that his role is great. It's Apparently he's been referred to as a rock star of the film. Um, I love Hawkeye. Hawkeye is probably my favorite Avenger, and very few people realize how cool Hawkeye is because we haven't, you know, gotten a lot of cool scenes with him. So hopefully this movie is going to really give us some great Hawkeye because he really is the best Avenger. Um, here we have Tony in the Hawkbuster armor. Now, people crapped their pants when they saw this because they were like, who is that big red robot fighting the Hulk? Well, it's Tony Stark in the Hawkbuster armor. And as you can see, there's a couple things I want you to pay attention to in this in this photo. Number one, you can see that Iron Man is inside the Hawkbuster armor. So he's actually two layers of armor. So it's Tony inside the Iron Man suit, and then the Iron Man suit is inside the Hawkbuster armor. So it's two layers of armor, which is just really, really cool. Um, also, if you look at his kneecaps, you can see um, Tony's reactors on his kneecaps, which is the same reactors that power the Iron Man suit. So this Hawkbuster thing is so massive that it needs two additional reactors to power it, and they go in the kneecaps, and that's pretty cool. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Now, this is the one image that has really gotten me bugged out, and this is it's a hospital bed. And um, right before this image, there's actually um, someone being pushed on a gurney, like a hospital gurney, and then we see this, like, you know, we see a, somebody with a latex glove and some surgical equipment on a table and somebody laid down and look, what appears to be in a hospital gown in the, in the distance. I literally have no idea what this means. But the fact that they put it in the trailer leads me to believe that it's something that they want us to speculate about and it's something that's important. Who could be getting an operation? What type of operation could they be getting? I, I, I don't really have, you know, a concrete <laughs> idea as to what this is, but I know it's very important. Um. But, you know, we'll figure that out later or when we see it. Um, here we have a great shot of Quicksilver. Uh, I want to speak on this real quick. Um, now, there's going to be <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how Quicksilver plays out. Everyone knows how great Quicksilver was in Days of Future Past. For a lot of people don't realize, Quicksilver is a comic book character who is both an X-Man and an Avengers. So when Fox and Marvel split the movie rights, they both were able to get the movie rights to the character Quicksilver. So this character Quicksilver is in two superhero franchises, but it's not the same Quicksilver. Um, now, the Days of Future Past version is obviously very different um, than the, uh, the Avengers version. Now, people love the Quicksilver scene from Days of Future Past, and I love it too, but here's my only problem. The only problem is that he moves so fast in that film that it's almost like he could destroy everybody. Like, when you really think about how powerful Quicksilver is in Days of Future Past, he could literally defeat everyone in that film, you know? So I was, I think they kind of overdid the whole speed thing with Quicksilver just because they wanted to really make a cool scene, which they did. And I'm just judging by how Quicksilver looks in this movie. It looks like his speed power is going to be a little bit more realistic and a little bit more believable and probably come off cooler. Um, but that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people are probably not going to agree with that because people love Quicksilver from Days of Future Past. Um, here we have Thor <laughs> yoking up Tony Stark. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, we are seeing the Avengers having issues with each other. We're seeing the Avengers having problems. Um, obviously, people are going to be really pissed off at Tony because he builds Ultron. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people are talking about the Civil War storyline coming up between the Avengers and a lot of different things. I think this might lead into that. Uh, you know, I could see Thor getting really pissed off at Tony and everybody being pissed off at Tony for the Ultron thing. And here we have an interesting image because we see Ultron with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch behind him. And, um, you know, we know that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are going to start off at the beginning of this movie as villains, 
working for Hydra and then eventually be, you know, pulled into the Avengers. But this looking at Ultron right here, this looks like one of the final forms of Ultron, the more evolved forms. And, you know, at this point in the film, why would he be working with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch? My theory is this. My theory is that Ultron does not like humans and he wants to kill all humans. But I don't think he considers Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch to be human because they're metahuman, right? They were experimented on and kind of received these crazy powers. So maybe he tries to work with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch or tries to, you know, uh, affiliate himself with them because he doesn't feel the same way about them as he does the, as the rest of the Avengers. But that's just a theory. Who knows? Um, and this final photo is just going to be Ultron right here. And um, all I can say is I think we are going to finally have a really awesome villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe um, besides Loki. A lot of people have been complaining about the villains in the Marvel Universe, and I think Ultron is going to be layered. Um, that line that he says, there are no strings on me, with the whole Pinocchio music playing in the background, that's awesome. I can't even tell you how awesome that is because that's just letting me really see how layered an old, you know this robot is going to be. And James Spader's voice just sounds great. You know, it, it it sounds human, but it sounds digitized. Like it's just evil. And I think I think this this movie's gonna be pretty awesome, man. And um, I'm really excited. Uh, great trailer. Uh, we're gonna you know continue to speculate and try to figure out some of the details in it. But uh, yeah, man, Avengers Two: Age of Ultron coming. Coming soon, y'all. All right, it's Peace Out, checking in for Nerd Era. Peace.